Okay, so we are talking about context free grammar and context free language. So, just to recap. So, it is a uh, four tuple where v is the uh, set of variable finite set of variable and t is the finite set of terminals, p is the productions rules productions and s is the starting variable which is belongs to v, it is a special variable which is called starting variable. And then uh, we, we have a derivation based on the production. So, if we say uh, S, so usually this V, this derivation, the production consists of this type of uh, rules where A is a variable and we have one variable here in the left hand side and right hand side it is a string of either variable or terminals. Okay. So, production consists of such uh, rules. So, we have many such rules are there in the uh, in in uh, in the set P. Okay. And so far we have talked about this A is a variable. Now, we will take an example where A can be I mean th this is a different type of grammars, so which we will not often refer, where A consists of string also. So, instead of variable A consists A is also a string A belongs to consist of string. So, this is uh, this is different type of grammar, but we will not often discuss about it I mean, but this has some applications also, but for our case we will strict on A is a variable, but let us talk about bit on this let us take an example of this variant of context free grammar. So, suppose we consider this grammar G say we have two variable S and A 1 and we have this terminals 0 1 2, we have the productions and we have S. Now, P consists of what? P consists of say S is rule is S is going to 0 S A 1 2, no problem. Uh, again another rule is no issue, but here this is one rule A 1 2 and 1 A 1 is going to 1. So, this is this is which we uh, have not seen yet this type of rules this type of productions, because so far we have seen the production the left hand side is a single variable, but here left hand side is coming from is belongs to uh, it is also a string consists of variables and the terminals. So, this is a different type of gamma which we uh, do not often discuss. Uh, which will uh, which is, but which may occur I mean, but for our case we will only consider those which is this left hand side is only a variable, but anyway let us talk about which type of language it is generating. Uh, so, suppose this is our grammar, then if we ask find the language generated by this G. Okay. So, now we can see what type of language generated by G. So, we will show this language is nothing but 0 to the power n, 1 to the power n, 2 to the power n, where n is uh, greater than equal to 1. So, it is basically all the strings of any number of zeros, any number of 1s and any number of 2s. So, that we have to show. Let us just okay. So, let me write it here. So, rules are S is going to 0 S A 1 2, another is 
0 1 2 uh, no more and another two rules are 2 a 1 is a 1 2 and 1 a 1 is going to 1 1. Okay. Now, S is going to from, so we are, we want to find the string which are uh, derivable from this. So, L of g is basically what? L of g is set of all string of terminals such that which can be derived by one or more steps by using the productions of g from S. That is that is our language. So, you want to find this. Now, if we use this 0 1 s is going to 0 1 2. So, 0 1 2 belongs to L of g. If we use this now, if we use another rule 0 s a 1 2. Now, here again if we use the uh, say uh, uh, if we use this rule again 0 s is again going to 0 1 2 say 0 1 2 and then a 1 2. And 2 a 1, 2 a 1 is going to say a 1 2. So, this is again 0 1 no 0 0 1 and 2 a 1 is going to a 1 2, 2. Now, this is now a 1, 1 a 1, 1 a 1 is going to a 1, 0 0 1 1 2 2. So, this is 0 square, 1 square, 2 square. So, similarly we can show any form of 0 to the power n, 1 to the power n, 2 to the power n can be derived from this. So, we can derive from S any form of this. Okay. So, this is one example where we, we are using the as, uh, production rule in this form like we have the mixture like uh, string mixing with the variables and the terminals, but which often we do not use that type of grammar. Yeah, so, we can take another example. We can take another example, say example of this type of grammar. Say G is the variables are S, A 1, A 2, say, and this is A B, and this is P, this is S, and the P consists of S is going to A, A 1, A 2, A, no problem so far. A 1 is going to uh, B A, A 1, A 2, B, and A 2 is going to A 1, A B, and A, A 1 is going to B A A and B A 2 B. So, this is the type which we are which is new to us this is different type of gamma which is using the uh, not only the variable it is using the string of variables and the terminals A B. So, A B sorry A B A B A B A B. So, these are our rules. Now, we can easily check that this uh, B A A uh, then B B A B then triple A A A A then B B A B A. We can check this belongs to L of G. We can just uh, follow this rule and we can derive. So, this is another example where we have 
this uh, left hand side of the production is not only a variable, but it is also a string of variables and the terminal. But this is different type of gamma, we will we'll not go on that. So, we will just strict ourselves on the gamma, where uh, this we have only the variables in the production in the left hand side. So, like V T P S, our productions are of the form all the rules like A is going to alpha, where A is a variable, it is not a string of variable and terminals, and but alpha is a string of variables terminals. So, we will we'll, we'll we'll concentrate on this type of gamma. Okay. So, now let us talk about more on this our context free gamma. So, uh, suppose we want to construct a gamma. So, one example suppose we want to construct a context free gamma. G, which is generating the all the integers all sign integer integers. What do you mean by sign integers? Sign integers means it is say uh, 5, 2, 7, this is one integer. This is if no sign is there, it is means plus. Then minus 5 to 7, this is another integer. Then minus 17, minus 52, plus 55, this is one integer. Even we can have the symbol plus. So, this type of integer we want to get. We want to have a grammar which will, uh, which can uh, whose language is which can generate this type of integers. I mean the language is a str uh, it can uh, generate all the strings of this form. Okay, so, how to generate that? So, you have to have a rules. So, you have to have a grammar to do that. So, uh, so, let us try to construct a grammar. So, let g be v P P S, where V is uh, S is the starting variable, and we have another variable called sign, and we have another variable called digit, and we have another variable called integer. Okay. And the terminals are basically what it, it will eventually go to all the combinations of the digits and the uh, and the, uh, this plus or minus in the prefix. So, it is all the digit 0, 1, 2 up to 9 and then minus and plus, these are all terminals. And the rules, the productions P. So, P consists of like this, S is going to uh, sign or an integer and the sign is going to sign is either plus or it, 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 it will go to minus. There are two rules over here plus and minus and the integer integer is going to. So, integer is either a integer that means, it is a positive integer or it have a uh, digit then integer oh, sorry it is digit or it can have say if it is single digit then it will go to a digit or if it is a more digit say 0 1 3 5. So, 
this is a digit then we must have an integer to get these digits. So, this is a digit followed by integer or just a integer or oh, sorry just a digit. Okay. Now, where is the digit will go? Digit will go to either one of this 0, 1, this, these are the rules 2, 9. So, digit can go to 0, this is one production, digit will go to 1, another production, this will go to 2, like this, digit will go to n. Okay. So, this is our grammar, this is our productions. Now, what is the language accept generating by this grammar? So, we can show L of g is basically all the sign integers, the set of all integers positive or negative set of all integers. Okay. Set of all integer can be generated by this gamma. Say for example, if we have a integer say minus 1 7, how to generate this from S? From S what we can do? From S we can just take the sign and integer and now this sign is we can put minus and then an integer, an integer we can go like this digit and integer because we have two two digit so we have so this is two step so we can take this as integer then this integer can be minus of digit then an, another integer and then, then, then this digit may be 1, so minus 1 and we have an integer and now this integer we can have a 7, so minus 1 7. So, this s is, so s is, so minus 1 7 is derived by this uh, production of g from s, so minus 1 7 is an, is generating from this. A grammar. So, this is belongs to L of g. So, not only minus 1 7, any integer positive or negative can be generated by this. So, now we will draw a uh, sorry, this should keep integer digit. Yeah, now we will draw what is called derivation tree. Okay, so, we will just try to draw the derivation of minus 1 7. So, S, S is going to have S has sign and the integer and this sign is going to either plus we will take the minus 1 and the integer is again going to we will take this rule digit and integer again and then this digit we can go to 1 and this integer again we can go to digit and this digit is going to 7 this digit is going to 7. So, this is the if we read this leaves it is minus 1 7. So, this is what is called derivation tree we will talk about more on this uh, derivation tree or it is called parts tree. So, this is the parts tree for the uh, string minus 1 7. Okay. So, different string is having different parts tree even for a given string we can have two parts tree. So, that is a ambiguity is there. We will talk about more on this. So, let us just define formally 
what do you mean by parse tree. So, we can have any say if we have uh, say plus 1 7. So, we will have this symbol to be plus like this. So, any integer can have a uh, can be derived from this s. So, let us formally define the derivation tree or the parse tree for a grammar. is also called parse tree. Okay. So, just now the tree we have seen that is called parse tree or the derivation tree for a given grammar for a given uh, string. Okay. So, formally the parse tree is a tree suppose you have given a grammar. Uh, a parse tree parse tree for G is a tree if this these are satisfied. What is this? So, every node is a uh, every every vertex. So, it is tree means it has a node or vertexes. Every vertex is either a variable or it is a terminal or epsilon if epsilon is uh, rules is there. So, every vertex every vertex or node of the tree has level which is symbol of either it is variable or terminals or it is epsilon. Okay. So, it is a tree, it is a tree where every vertex is say either a, where a is a either a variable or it could be uh, a terminal say alpha or it could be epsilon, okay. every vertex of that tree. Now, it start with the vertex s. So, the root is root is the sim vertex s I mean the starting symbol, because we start the tree with s. We take a rule of this, so it will we'll, we'll come to that. Okay. So, now this third is if a vertex is uh, if a vertex is interior interior and as labeled by A as labeled by A, then A must be a variable. So, only the interior vertices are the variables and all the leaves vertices are the either epsilon or the terminals labeled by A, then A must be a variable. Okay. All the leaves vertices are uh, terminals, because once we reach to the terminal, then we have no more production, because there is no rule which is from terminal to something. So, we stop at the terminals. So, so that, so before that the interior vertex, all the interior vertex are just labeled uh, are the variables. Okay. Now, uh, now if we have a, uh, so if we have a rule like this x 1, x 2, x n and in a tree if a a is there then the the child of these are basically x 1 x 2 x n these are the child of this uh, variables because this is coming from the rule if we have a rule then we have the branches of that subtree so this is a subtree rooted by a so for a s for the starting part, this is our starting vertex. So, what is the we take any rule from S. So, suppose S is going to say A B or say uh, 0 S A, then we can have 0 S A. 
So, these branches are basically the productions. Okay. So, this is the way we construct uh, this and the vertex has level epsilon uh, and the leaf, leaf nodes are once it is reached to a terminal or epsilon, epsilon means if we have a rule say a if we have a rule a is going to epsilon then we can have epsilon over here. Okay, so, this is the called parts tree, we will take a quick example on this. This is called derivation tree or the parts tree. Okay, so, uh, suppose you have a gamma like this S A, there are two variables and say A B, these are the terminals P and S. And suppose P consists of the rules S is going to A S, sorry A or A and A is going to S B A or S S or B A. Okay. So, this is the now suppose we want to construct a parts tree or the derivation tree. So, we have to start from the root S, then we can take any one of these rules to have the their branches the childs. So, if you take this this one we have a a s. Okay. Now, a a has nowhere to go because a is a terminal we stop. Now, this can go this can go we can take any one of this which one we take that uh, we are taking say this this rule. So, this will go to s b a and suppose this is we are stopping at a small a and this A says say we are stopping at A and B we have no had to go and A say we are taking this for this A. So, B A. This is an example of a sparse tree or the derivation tree. Now, what it is yield? It yield the string of terminals like this we read like this from the left hand side A A A A B B A A. So, this is yield by this parts tree. So, this is this yields this string. Okay. So, for, for this string we have this derivation tree. So, if you have another derivation tree it will it it, it will yield another uh, string. So, this string is yield by this derivation tree. So, this is the example of derivation tree. So, we will talk on more on the derivation tree of the sparse tree in the next class. Thank you very much.